Man, it's been good to worship with you guys this morning already. Thank you, worship team. That was great. Danny, everything was just wonderful. Uh, I'm Pastor Brad, just in case you're a guest this morning. Nice to meet you. Would love to greet you after the service. I'll be right out in our, our lobby. I'm just going to adopt that word, okay? I'm just going to call it lobby. I've had that conversation with some of you. If you don't know what that is, it's the space between that exit and that exit door right out there, okay? But I'd love to greet you and, uh, and, and meet you today. Um, I'm really, really excited to begin this new series on love, sex, and the Bible because, friends, I can't think of a subject right now at this time in our world that the world gets more wrong than these three things. Um, and because our culture is so quickly drifting away from God's word in, in terms of understanding what it means to love a person and what it means to engage in a sexual relationship with a person, uh, man, I think it's such an important thing for us as God's people to take a month and consider what God actually has to say about this. And I think you're really going to be encouraged and challenged because, you know, um, contrary to what some people might think, this was God's idea. He created it to be a wonderful thing. It's not a dirty thing. It's a beautiful thing when it's done God's way. It really is. So we're going we're gonna to learn about that. Um, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're new here, let me remind you or let you know that inside your bulletin, there's this little yellow sheet. We call it the message notes. Um, thoughts, quotes, scriptures that I'll be sharing are all on here and uh, blanks to fill in. And I put some questions at the end so you can have a little impromptu small group this week and, and repeat these things like Danny, that was awesome, said. And uh, it'll help you live it out and uh, make it part of your life. So grab that and, and uh, we'll get into this. Now, in addition to be a great, being a great challenge, I think, for all of us, this first message is also going to serve as a, kind of an introduction to the next three messages. Um, but, but I, man, I, I can't wait to, to share it. Our, our mission, or our, our vision, rather, here at First Christian is changing relationships. I know you hear me say that every week in the video and probably read it here and there. Um, I love it because the gospel is all about changing relationships. It's, it's all about getting our life right with the, in, in terms of the one relationship that's the most important one in the world, that is our relationship with Christ who, who brings us into this beautiful relationship with the Father. And when we get that relationship right, it makes every other relationship better, better. And so we're on a mission as we talked all last month about wanting to be a reaching church, reaching people with the gospel, helping people connect with Jesus Christ, a teaching church, taking people who've made a decision to follow Christ and teach them all things as he's commanded us so that we can apply God's wisdom to our life, which is what we're going to do in this series, a connecting church, helping people connect in godly, Christ-centered relationships, and then a sending church. To have that sense that, that we're commissioned as ambassadors to go into our circle of influence, our world, if you will, and share Christ. And so in this series, we're going to focus on teaching. We're going we're to share some things that are going to make your life and your relationships better. I really believe that. I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but it's pretty high. In, in terms of the numbers of people who have come to me over the course of my ministry uh, and things in their relationship, things in their life are just messed up. Because somewhere along the line, they have picked up a warped view, a messed up view of what it means to love somebody or what it means to engage in a sexual relationship with somebody they have bought into what the world teaches about those things and they've lost sight of what god says and as a result they're 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 in a pinch they're in a pickle they're they got drama they got grief i mean drama some of you are totally familiar with all that maybe too familiar um, but anyway uh, i really this morning want to kind of focus on single people and young people now there's lots in here for everybody i promise but i, I really want to speak to to single and young people people who are kind of pre before the marriage thing 
uh, especially if man if you're a teen tune in okay because this is going to be helpful for you because here's what i want to do i want to try to save you not 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 me but i want to try to help you save you from a past that could really mess up your future okay and so that's an important thought i want to help you uh to 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 avoid a past that could really mess up your future now inside on, on your message notes here's a truth that i want us to consider okay all of life is connected all the days of our life all of life is connected and the choices that we make today will someday be part of our past and your past always impacts your present and your future you understand that you get that so so specifically okay now you can apply this to, to every area of your life and and beyond the, our uh, youngs and singles here you can apply this to your life but especially if you're at that young part in your life and you're, you're, you're making decisions about relationships and and sexuality and, and and how to engage in that and what does god say about that the decisions you make today someday are going to be back here in your past in the rearview mirror and you're going to find yourself maybe in a relationship or whatever and w the decisions you make back here will totally shape where you're at now so I want to help you make godly decisions that will lead to a good life, a life that honors Him, a life that will bless you. If you are, uh, if you're married or you're ever thinking about being married, this series is going to help you big time. And here's why. In all my years in ministry, now, now you tune in because this is going to sound kind of weird, but you'll get it. I have never met a couple that has marriage problems I know you're thinking what, what, what? now here's what I mean I've had a lot of people come to me and say oh Pastor Brad my marriage is in trouble or we're in trouble or we're having problems I said okay great let's, uh, not great but let's sit down and let's talk about it it's horrible it's horrible but you know I'm happy to help you and here's what happens every single time we start talking about marriage problems what we discover is that what actually happened is that two individuals who have problems in their past got married and they brought those problems from their past into their relationship and now after they've done some life together those problems from their past are starting to come to the surface and they're impacting the relationship you see how that works that's why I really want to speak some things today uh, to folks who maybe are at the beginning of this journey so that you can begin to make godly choices right now godly choices in terms of what it means to love a person and what it means to engage in that kind of a, a sexual relationship and those all because god says some powerful things about it so that when you get to that point you'll you'll be in a much better much more healthy place rick warren says man it is wise to learn from your past that is true we could all write a list of things we've learned from our past but he goes on it is so much wiser to learn from other people's past it's a lot less painful too isn't it you know you don't have to beat your head personally against every mistake in life to learn those lessons although my dad used to tell me he thought i had to you know he, 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 I don't know if he coined the phrase or what, but he'd always say, Brad, you got like four degrees from the school of hard knocks, you know, because that's just the way I was. But, but we don't want to have to go down that road. We can learn from God's word. We can learn from, from the experience of other people. And, and so I want to share with you truths today that will make your life better, that will help you, as our subtitle said, to have far less grief and less drama in your life more health more joy and you know what else will happen when you begin to live your life in line with god's wisdom and his teaching in this area you're going to shine in this culture like a bright star in the night sky because as the culture drifts further and further away so does the dysfunction and brokenness that comes with those decisions to go the opposite direction of god and when someone actually lives for christ and, and, and reaps the beautiful fruit and blessings of doing so, man, you're going to shine. You're going to shine, and it's going to be a testimony to our awesome Father. So I'm going to give you the secret today, okay? That's what the title of the message is, the secret to an awesome 
Christ-centered, successful marriage. So think about this if you're moving toward it or if you're in it. This is the secret. And, and I'm going to give it to you in two parts, okay? First, kind of the negative uh, side of the coin and then the positive, and we'll, we'll do them kind of quick side, side by side here. First, the negative way of stating it is that the secret to a successful marriage is not finding the right person. The secret to a successful marriage is not finding the right person. Now, here's what I mean by that, because that statement runs counter to everything in our culture. Everything in our world says it's about finding the one. Finding Mr. Right. That's what all the books and movies and magazines. I watched a fun movie with Kel last night on Hallmark, and man, it was all about, she found the one. <laughs> Took her the whole movie to get there, but she found the one. And then she kissed, and the credits rolled. You know why? Because Hallmark has no idea how to deal with life after that moment. <laughs> right? It's just true. So she thought she found the one anyway, and we're all led to believe that she did. And of course, you know where the world goes. If it doesn't work out, well then, I guess they just weren't the one. Because when you find the one, it'll all be good. Well, listen, if that's, not, that's not what it's about. What it's about is the second part. The secret to a successful marriage is becoming the right person. Okay? It starts with pausing and taking a look inside here, doing an inventory, and responding to what Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. This is, this, is, this is the verse that we're going to consider this morning. It's just a short little phrase, but it is so powerful. Peter says, 1 Peter 3.15, But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Set apart Christ as Lord. Make the decision today that I don't take my cues from the world or the culture regarding this subject or any other subject in the world. I am dedicating my life to following Jesus and living a life that honors Him and that is in keeping with who He is. Friends, this is the foundation, not just to, to sex and relationships and doing that way. It, it, this is the foundation to every other part of your life being joyful. Your social life, your, your, your spiritual life, your emotional life. When Jesus gets to sit on the throne of your heart, when you give Christ the steering wheel, He will direct your life toward wholeness, toward peace, toward joy, toward a healthy, healthy place, including in these areas that we're talking about today. I'll tell you a story that I heard a while back that I think illustrates this so well. There's a girl, we're going to kind of, it's based on a true story. I'm going to just change some names here. So her name was Lisa, we'll say. And Lisa was raised in a Christian home. And she was taught all the right things about Jesus. She grew up in the youth group. She grew up at church. She knew all the right things. She could answer all the questions in the Bible studies. But for her, it never really moved, like Danny was talking about with our song. It never quite moved from here to here. She never really got serious about surrendering her life and setting Christ apart as Lord of her life. She could probably quote that verse, but she didn't actually know what it meant to live there. And so when she got into her 20s, she just launched into the date, dating world, and she did it the way the world prescribed. She just was looking for Mr. Right. And man, she went on all kind of dates. And there were some ups, and there were some downs. There were some really fun ones, and there were some train wrecks, right? But all in all, she said, it just kind of was empty. It was just empty. Well, where's this going? She couldn't find Mr. Wright. And then she found him. Steve was his name, and he was the total package. He had the looks. He had the personality. He had the career. He had the brains. And he loved Jesus Christ with all of his heart. 
He wasn't obnoxious about his faith. He was just genuine and authentic, and he built his life and his, his values and his morals and his ethics and everything he did around the lordship of Jesus. It was awesome. And so a weekend or two after she met him, she was at home and she was talking. Lisa was talking with her mom about Steve and how awesome he was. One of those mom-daughter talks. I'm not very good at describing it because I'm like outside that window. But you, you, you guys, you get where I'm going, right? And they're just talking and they're just sharing and she's just going on and on about how awesome Steve is and her mom in a moment of just mom love speaking the truth in love to her daughter she said honey Steve sounds awesome there's just one problem with this whole thing guys like Steve who are really serious about their walk with Jesus aren't looking for girls like you who aren't and it was like, ah, oh, thanks, Mom. You know, she got defensive. She got angry. It's the cycles we go through when we're hit with some truth like that sometimes. But it really made her stop and think. And after she kind of blew up and tried to defend herself, even knowing in her heart that her mom was right, she went to her bedroom and had a real time of reflection in her life. Now, we'll come back to Lisa's story in a second, but I want to shift gears and just share a little bit from my story I remember when I was a student at Anderson University I had some friends Brian and Jeannie who went to a New Hope Christian there with us and, and uh, I said Brian is there a Christian girl left on the planet you ever felt that way like, wait, come on because I, I was so tired of just looking and I was like I don't even want to date I just want a friend I just want a friend well Brian and especially Jeannie she was a matchmaker and she's like hmm and she knew this girl who had come to Anderson from Pennsylvania to go to school her name was Kelly and so she invited her to come to dinner it was a it was a, it was a, uh, it was a blind date and, and they set us up <laughs> yeah come on now <laughs> I wasn't going to go there but it was it was at least a half a blind date right those of you who are on the inside know what I'm saying there um, the rest of it, though, t- come on, let's get out of that. T- 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 uh, the rest of it was history, though, because we were kind of inseparable after that. We just, and now we've, we've enjoyed 27 years plus of awesome marriage. Now, yes, there's been ups and there's been downs and all of the stuff that comes with life, but we have walked through it with our eyes on Jesus loving each other. And it's been awesome. But here's the deal. I was looking for a girl who loved Jesus. Now, I just happened to get really doubly blessed that this girl who loved Jesus was also beautiful and the smartest girl I've ever known and has probably made me, well, not probably, has made me a far better person because there's been days when she's loved Jesus more than me and said, Brad, and as my mom used to say, she jerked a knot in my tail and pulled me back and come on. And she's been all she's been everything. She's smart, she's funny. And then I guess she saw something in me too. Uh, because she was looking for a guy who loved Jesus. And she's told me many, many times over the course of our marriage, Brad, if I'd have met you BC, I wouldn't have been interested. And I don't blame her. She probably wouldn't even have come to the dinner. Jeannie wouldn't even have invited her because she wasn't looking for that. See, both of us had made decisions in our past about following Jesus that shaped us into the kind of person that the person we were looking for was looking for. Do you get it? We had made decisions. I want to say that one more time. We had made decisions in our past about following Jesus that had shaped us into the kind of person that the person we were looking for was looking for. That's why becoming the right person is more important than just randomly trying to find the right person. You see, if you're here today and and you're like, yeah, I go to church, but if you're honest, you're living what is called a lukewarm life, right? You're like, yeah, I go to church, but I also got one foot over here in the world and I'm kind of doing this thing and you just know you're not you're not really 
you don't set apart Christ as Lord you just kind of know that but man you want to find a mate who loves Jesus and who's, on, who's honest and faithful and good and true and all of those things that, that someone who loves the Lord that kind of character well here's what you just got to understand that person isn't looking for a lukewarm person right so we just got to really kind of grab on to that. Now, <clears throat> this myth of finding the right person is powerful because it's half true. Once you dedicate your life to Christ and you set Christ apart as Lord, now you've got a framework and a clear idea about the kind of person that you want to be as part of your life. So let's get back to Lisa. Lisa. She's back in her room and she said that day I changed my life I rededicated my life to following Christ and I decided right then and there that I was going to focus on becoming the kind of person who would be right for the kind of person that I want to date and someday maybe marry that's the key that's the key that's the big lesson today we're going to cover a lot of things in this series today or, or this month I should say but all of it all of it ultimately comes down to 1 Peter 3.15 setting Jesus apart as Lord in each of our hearts and making that commitment to living for him in every area of our lives and then making sure that whoever we pursue has made those same commitments in their life and this series is going to help is going to help you do that and if you're married already as we go through this it's going to help you to make better choices good choices godly choices that will make your marriage and your relationship better and if you are at the other end of this whole spectrum and you say hey we've been we're celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary coming up you know you kind of passed what i've been talking about this morning i got a great challenge for you that's going to bless you here in just a second i'll get to it but you can play an awesome role in the church in this area and so I want to begin to draw this to a close with one statement and three questions. Okay? Think about this. God created sex and you, and he knows how both work best. I just need to, like, say, okay, amen, got that. Going forward, that's why we're looking to his word to, uh, to grow in our wisdom in these areas. Question number one. This is to the singles in the house. Okay? Are you the person that the person you're looking for is looking for? Are you there? Is Jesus squarely sat on the throne of, the, of your heart? Have you made him your Savior and your Lord? If you haven't, you can come today and say, I want to follow Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. And then you can be well on your way to becoming that kind of person. Question number two. This is for the married folk in the room. Are you the kind of spouse that your spouse wants to be married to? Or needs in a marriage, in a mate? You see, what we're talking about there is really the heart of covenant. This is something the world really gets wrong as well so many folks or pretty much every time that I, I, I deal with marriage counseling it comes down to they've kind of slipped into contract mode versus covenant okay contract whenever you enter into a contract with someone it's all about you protecting your own interests I'm going to sign this contract to make sure I get out of this deal what I want out of this deal right in other words the, uh, the vows at the, at the altar would be for better or for until I don't really like it. For richer or until you don't have enough money to support me. 
That's the contract mentality, right? It's like, as long as I'm good, then, then we're good. But you can see how that falls apart really quick. Um, covenant is the opposite of that. Covenant, and the way God intended marriage, is for better or for worse, for richer or for poor. I'm going to be unto you. I, my goal when I wake up in the morning is to make sure that I am serving you and helping you and vice versa. And when we're pouring into each other like that, that's how to become one flesh. Right, that, that's what marriage is about. So are you, are, you, are you that person? And then the third question, this is for our, our golden marrieds, right? Our seniors. How might God want to use you to mentor others in this area of life? Because you have boatloads of experience and wisdom in your life that is real and that is road tested right and that is built on jesus my grandma is just one of the things that i just loved watching her do she uh she was married for a little over 30 years and then she was a widow for about 31 or two years before jesus brought her home and in her that time as a widow that last season of her life she was always looking for young couples that she could invite into her life and have over for dinner and just get to know and just kind of adopt as grandkids and just love on them and talk with them about life and in the process mentor them and counsel them and help them and answer questions and point them to Jesus and fill their mind with covenant mindset and what it means to trust Jesus and do this right. Oh my goodness, we have a room filled with wisdom among our seniors. And I just want to challenge you to, to open up your heart. Maybe God today is saying, wow, what a ministry. It might not ever show up on a flow chart or a diagram or whatever, but the kingdom will, will know that it's happening. The Father will know that it's happening. As you just reach out and love people and invite them in, and who knows how you could mentor a young couple in this area. Boy, that's needed. So, whatever God is saying to you today, Let's have hearts that are open to Him. Let's say, yes, Lord, I want to set you apart as Lord. I want to become the right person. I want to become the kind of spouse that I need to. Yes, Lord, I'm open to maybe being that mentor. Whatever God's calling us to. Let's say, yes, Lord, here's my heart. I love that song. We're going to sing that here in a moment. Here's my heart, Lord. You have your way in it today. Let's pray. Father, grateful for who you are for your wisdom for the fact that you made us to be relational beings and to live in relationship with each other and then you sent your son so that we could have a relationship with you and 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 god just just be active in this room at this moment i just pray that you'd encourage hearts help those who maybe 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 as we went through this are thinking, man, I've already blown this in so many ways. God, help them to know that grace is bigger than all of that. Help them to know that you can restore them, that this is a fresh, this is a new day. They can begin to make decisions right now that can rebuild and restore and, and move toward a healthy place. God, help, help our young people in the room today to know that, that, man, you are the creator of life. And you know how to live it. Help us to make decisions to set you apart as Lord. To live for you. To, to, to build this area of our life and every area around your wisdom and teaching. I pray for our married couples in this room today. That we would, we would strive to become the kind of spouse that our spouse needs us to be. Uh, loving and serving as Christ would. I pray for our seniors that, that you just bless them. And their lives. Thank you for the, the life they've lived and the example that they set. And maybe they'd be open, Lord. Maybe your heart would, or your spirit would tug on their heart and say, just help them to, to be open to praying and being watchful for someone they'd be able to mentor and bless and encourage. Lord, help us as a church to take this journey toward doing this right for you. We love you. We're going to lay our hearts before you, Lord. We want to sing the song, Here's Our Heart. You have your way in it, Lord. And if anyone needs to come and pray, maybe rededicate their life to setting Christ apart as Lord today or make that first decision to follow Him. Lord, may we say, 
yes to you. In Jesus' name, amen.